going on guys? Welcome back. Haha, <laughs> today we're going to be learning something really cool. A lot of you guys request, let me fix this ring light just one second. Good. A lot of you guys requested this. I've been flooded with requests to teach the Lapal spread. So the Lapal spread is a really tricky sort of flourish to spread cards and it takes a lot of practice. It does take some getting used to, but once you do nail it, it looks quite beautiful. It's a lovely way of just spreading cards to have someone select a card or it's like one of those power moves. Like I like power moves. There are certain, like the spring is a power move. Like there are all sorts of really cool things that you can do on camera or in person that just catch people's eye and that look really fancy. See, this is one of them. It's one that you're going to have to practice, but that you need to practice. Like if you get this down, you'll be really proud of yourself. So don't let up. It's going to take hours and hours. Just get back to it. Put the deck down, do something else, come back at it, do it again, days and days over and over. And then eventually it's going to just be like spreading butter, melting butter in your hands. And it feels great. It looks great. So let's get into it. All right. So before we begin, these are the Virtuoso launch, first launch edition, no longer available. Uh, but if you like playing cards, I'll leave a link below where you can find something really cool. We'll tell you what it is, but when you get there, you'll see. Also, if you're interested in learning the history of the Paul spread and learning uh, where to, because Paul Paul has like all sorts of really cool sleight of hand magic. I'll leave a link below where you could check out a book, uh, which which has this and many more things taught by LaPaul. We're gonna look at just like an overview from the front and then we'll get into the uh, better positioning. The grip is like so. Now I have giant banana hands. These are, I got big mitts, okay? You don't need big hands to do this. Um, so if you say my hands are too small, <laughs> it's not true. Your hands are just not strong enough yet. So just be sure to keep practicing and eventually you'll get it. So the finger placement is gonna be like so. You're basically holding your hand out like this. All right, your fingers are going to be basically in the middle of that deck where you got index all the way to pinky in the middle. And this is not on the bottom of my hand like this. It's slightly raised up to this part here. Okay, so not down here, up here. You wanna make sure all your fingers are contacting all of the cards. So don't leave a gap on the bottom, you know, sort of like that where you're not contacting them. Your fingers need to be contacting all of them. Boom, once you're placed in, you're ready to go. Now, I'm like slightly applying pressure. See how the deck's sort of bowing like that? You see that, how that bow happens? Kind of like the uh, waterfall where you, you need to like apply pressure, but instead of it being on this side, it's gonna be on the length side and you want your deck to bend inwards like that. Now, after doing this for a long time, your deck will start to warp. Flip the deck around and do it with the other side. And uh, if you bend it too much, you're gonna get a weird crimp in it. You don't want that. New cards are gonna be a little bit harder to do this at first. So I suggest grabbing not an old deck, but something broken in. Just because when you do this, the cards, they sort of, it helps when they stick together. So if they're a little bit sticky, if they're a little bit used, it'll it'll help a lot. If they're brand new, you're, you might have cards flying all over the place and it'll be a little bit harder for you. Pressure here, you see that bevel, you see that bow, your thumb, is gonna come back here. So this is where I place my thumb. A lot of people like to place it in the corner. I like to place it right here. Not my whole thumb, just the tip of it like that. And as I press here, the cards are being released from my index. So I'll give you a look at just that. Notice the movement on my index, how, it, how I start curled like this, like in a hook. Watch, watch my finger here. Watch how they start to change, right? So the pressure starts here and ends here, okay? If that makes sense, your pressure starts up here because you want to get those top ones to spring off first. So they're pushing off here, boom, and they're pushing outwards. And as there's less and less cards, obviously the pressure is going to transfer from the top here down to like the bottom, just to give you an idea. Now, you can practice this without doing the spread, just kind of to get that muscle memory going. Now, at first, you're gonna get like burst. It's gonna be like bump, 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 bump. I can't, let's see if I can do it with my left hand. Maybe that'll help me what it feels like if you guys are still, ooh, this is hard. Yeah, so that's kind of what it's gonna look like for you if you're just starting. Okay. So don't get discouraged because that's exactly what, what's happening right now to me on my left hand. 
right? So there's my little pulse spread with my left hand. Probably what yours looks like right now if you're first attempting it. And eventually that muscle will just build itself. And look at this. I can like do the wave with my hand. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Kind of what it feels like when you lapel spread. Boom, here. All fingers are applying pressure to this part of the hand and you're slowly going to move your index out of the way, these fingers out of the way, so that the cards can, can shoot off. This hand goes back here, the thumb goes back here. And what's gonna hold these cards in position, what's gonna hold all these cards in position is a combination of things. It's this hand here, which is like spread out, so it holds as many cards as possible, but also the cards are going to hold the other cards. Now, if that makes sense. So right here, as you see, like I'm not touching these cards. It's kind of like the cards are holding themselves and that allows you to spread it bigger. So at first it's just gonna be like that, which is cool. But if you want that S spread, if you want that like longer spread, uh, the cards are gonna end up holding it. So something like that. Hold on, let me get this right for you. There you go. So the cards are kind of being balanced. My thumb is preventing them from flying away because they're like, they're arched on my thumb like that. All right, enough of this. Let's go behind the back and show you guys some more work on it. Okay, so from here, again, that's the pressure. Thumb comes here basically like around the middle, right? Now, if you were to do it without lapel spreading, I suggest that you practice that. I suggest that you practice just spreading cards. Thumb goes here and try to spread it as wide as possible. So my ring finger here is holding cards, right? So from here, my ring finger is holding cards. If you look underneath, like it's, it's just touching, but it's preventing them from flying away. If you want your lapel spread looking good, practice just spreading cards as wide as possible. And then when you have this, you'll understand how you can, uh, how you can spread it better, okay? Now for the S spread, this is, uh, this is like the advanced lapel. So once you, once you learn that and you're getting there, uh, you wanna do, you wanna do one of these, like where the deck kind of shaped like an S. Right? Uh, you can see that. Not really, you know, let me do it from here. So if you watch the trailer in the beginning, I do this kind of like S thing, right? And what's cool about that is there's there's a misconception when a lot of people do this. So they, they do it and they move the backhand. And that's not what the lapel spread, uh, that's not when it looks its best. It looks best when when this hand doesn't move and, and the only movement is coming from this hand here. All I'm doing with my backhand is sort of like turning a little bit to give it that curvature, but all the cards are coming off here, so it's kind of like they're appearing one after another out of nowhere, which, which is what makes it look cool. So here, pressure, thumb, and you start to go out. Now you can, you can see them wanting to spring. Don't tilt too far this way, right? Don't tilt upwards because they'll, uh, they'll end up falling. Don't tilt too far forwards because they'll end up going forwards. Keep it very leveled and the work should do it on its own. Like all the work should happen from here. Okay. All I'm asking you to do is practice this. Just practice that. Don't even practice this. Like practice the spread, practice this. And then put those two together and you'll have a lovely lapel spread. In the trailer as well, I did this nifty little thing. This is called the Silver Surfer, I believe by Aaron Fisher. It might not be Aaron Fisher. It might be Aaron Fisher. Might not be, but it might be. Might be Aaron Fisher or it might not be Aaron Fisher. But that, that's a cool little flourish that you can do. You just push out the top card, hold it there, do your spread, let go and let it fall into the middle of the deck. So if you're doing an ambitious routine where they say, okay, there's that card, we're gonna take that card and leave it somewhere in the middle. It looks flourishy, looks really cool. And of course the card is on top. It might be Aaron Fisher, but it might not be. This is also a cool little way to close it, which I did in that little trail. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh my card. Uh, this is Dennis Kim who does this and I noticed he did it. So you should check him out, Dennis Kim on Instagram. Uh, he's an incredible sleight of hand magician and comes up with a lot of really cool fancy concepts. So when he closes this, 
these two go up here, these two go down here, and he kind of like rotates it, right? So when you're here, and after you close it, just looks kind of like really flourishy to be like, all right, we've got some cards here. What we're gonna do is blah, blah, blah. It just kind of looks really cool. I like that. I like that eye candy stuff. And I don't give a crap if any magician says, well, it's not necessary. You didn't you mean me. Come on, get a life. It looks beautiful. People, people appreciate it. And more importantly, I like it. So, oh, what was that? That was weird. You use your indexes, you know, just kind of. Rotate it like that. I think it's just a cool move. So remember again, if you're having trouble, just keep applying pressure. There's, Dan and Dave sell this little hand thing where you can like work your hand muscles. I've never used one of those, but they might work. But honestly, just squeezing a deck and doing that, just, just doing this, you know, kind of the same pressure you want to do for like an anti-pharaoh. My anti-pharaoh game isn't as good as it used to be. Actually, that's not bad. It's almost half-half. Ooh, almost. Oh yeah, did I nail it? Uh, not really, okay. That kind of pressure can come in handy with a lot of different things. Let me try Curly Q. So there's a Curly Q, which I'm not good at, but that also uses the little Paul spread. You're just holding it a bit higher uh, in grip. And, and yeah, so <laughs> stay in school. So that's it. All right guys, that was it for the LaPaul spread. I hope you enjoyed the LaPaul spread. Really knacky move, fun to do. I gave you some tips. I need you to run with these tips and I need you to watch this video again if you don't understand because a lot of times people are like, I don't get it, I don't get it. Just go back and listen to every little detail. Look at the hand placements. Pressure is not something obviously that I can teach you, but once you build up that muscle memory and that enough muscle in that hand, you'll be able to do something really cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button fam and, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.